February 25th, 2024. I told you last night at Faith Family Church when I got out. Now my car is bugged. They sold the login to a lot of people. A lot of people there have it. And I pull in and I get out of my car and they're yelling stuff at me in the parking lot. About threatening to call Michelle. It's like, bring her back. Okay. And, um, yeah, right. She wasn't a retired judge's daughter and all this crazy stuff. And they're the human traffickers. Okay. And they walk in. The church should have surveillance. The people walking in before me. Got them. Okay. Like the guy that sat ahead of me in the sanctuary. No, it's funny. We heard those people out there yelling stuff at her. Okay. Now I went ahead and went back this morning. And it's like, you do realize there's investigators around me. You want to try yelling something at me again? Go ahead. I put a lot of things up on Facebook last night. How they fooled everybody and it was just Michelle. And she's a stripper. And that was her brother Alex and impersonating a retired judge oh big difference today don't say a word to her that girl wasn't even a retired judge's daughter she was scamming all of us God, nobody say a word they even scammed us about the chip they were scamming everybody about everything and then other ones I heard some guys talking. We heard some of the human traffickers here were here last night screaming stuff out in a parking lot at her. They better find out who they are. Okay. Yeah. I walk in and they're like, it's not funny. They said that she's fat and ugly anymore. Look at her. It's not funny they said that about her. Thank you. Okay. So. See, last night. Even Pastor Mark said there was prostitutes in there. And they were uh, dressed immodestly. But he didn't throw them out because they needed Jesus. There was guys there that smelled like they smoked a whole joint when they walked in. He said, I didn't throw them out because I needed Jesus. Those were the human traffickers. Like my neighbor, Keith. I said, do you remember the big truck guys that worked my case? He's like, and they said they were FBI. He said, yeah. I said, those were drug cartel people. He's like, that's fucked up, Karen. I said, we well, can get an uh, FBI badge on Amazon for $25. He's like, Karen, that's fucked up. He said, my God, they needed Jesus. I showed him the picture of that stripper. I said, he's like, I said, you see her before? He's like, yeah, I've seen her several times. Where at? I said, at church mocking me. And uh, he's like, my God, she needed Jesus. They all needed Jesus. Okay. Mo is so much nicer. Everybody's like, nobody say a word to her. That girl wasn't even a retired judge's daughter. She was in here scamming all of us. Yeah. See, I put it up on Facebook. Put it up with, they have the login of how everybody knows that's just Alex in a beard. And it framed me a retired judge. And she's some kind of stripper. That's where all the strip strippers from the strip clubs are showing up. Mm-hmm. Mocking me and the guys from the strip clubs showing up. Yeah. And they're just running scams on people. Well, Faith Family Church finally got a hold of it. That it's a big scam. They've been scamming all of them. Nobody say a word to her. Okay. Thank you. About time. About time. Okay. So. Because it's like. Go ahead and. 
You think you're going to bring her out? Bring her. People have been looking for her. Back in the beat, right before the case started, I was up at the Apostolic Church of Barberton. People were talking. Mary's uh, niece wants to date him. Her name's Michelle. Said that she'd want the chance to uh, date somebody like Dave. She'd even kill somebody for her. For it. And Dave said that he's excited, so excited he never had anybody saying that to kill somebody just to go out with him. And they talked about it, Michelle. Now, that could be Michelle the stripper, or that could be another one of his side girls that he manipulated her and her friends. And people were saying, well, that girl, that girl was one of, uh, Mary's niece. That's why they all hopped out. She didn't go to, yeah, she didn't go to church. She's a stripper. Okay. So I don't know if that's the Michelle, but the Michelle is not Pete's daughter. She is just a stripper. And she's in the drug hotel. Alex drives a medium gray truck and the Florida human traffickers. Um, I did a video earlier and it was so much better. I went through like everything. Of um even Judge Timothy Ludic seeing him in the back on the day of my divorce. Now, the courthouse, I go in for my divorce hearings before the divorce, and they would say the FBI informants here, nobody's to say a word, okay? And the cops would take out their butts when they walk by and say, hi, hi, it's good to see you. So one guy was behind the wall, they better be nice to her when she's here, okay? Or I'll take care of them. They better be nice to her. I don't know who is in there. But he was controlling, make sure nobody was ever rude, Okay? Well, I found out they were getting the backup places telling people that I was an FBI informant. Now, the regular cops that watched me um, could have had that afternoon off while I was in my final divorce hearing on 9-18-19. Uh, and because the courthouse is full of cops, I'm safe. They could go get coffee, go get lunch. They didn't have to go in. Uh, but Alex and his groupies, okay, got in the back said they were there to help protect me. They found out people were doing stuff like that. Okay. And uh, outside my room, uh, they're joking around a group of, of them. For you had us look into it, you knew she couldn't handle it. You knew she appreciated us doing it. And you can find she did nothing wrong. Okay. This guy in a white beard walks by. Santa Claus out. Like look on the face and hair. Walks by. Walking like this. Okay. Judge Timothy Luda comes in. We're ready to begin. Okay, on the courthouse wall was a picture of a, a guy that looked like a little white Santa Claus. His name was Peter something. I thought that was him. Mm -mm. And then for a moment when he walked by and only see him for a second, you look like the guy that said he bashed my skull in. Okay, all right. That Alec or Alex. On 12 21 18, I, I got a shower. Now they have a video of this in the case. Um... I go to the, I get a shower, get a house coat on. I open the refrigerator. I'm stabbed in the side of the neck and I'm foggy, hazy, hazy, dark, bright light. Felt myself cry out for six hours. There's a white comb on Dave's dresser. I wake up. I have marsh all over me. My head is still dented in and it feels like the imprint of a ball peen hammer. Even guys that I've let them feel it, it feels like you got hit in the back with a hammer. You got an imprint in your head. They could have killed me. They beat, I had marks all over me. I had been beat, raped, and left for dead. He left his white comb on Dave's dresser. Dave's accusing me of having an affair. I don't know what happened. I got jumped at the refrigerator. On January 4th of 19, they were confronting him and Bob Evans, you idiot, you left your comb over there, and he's admitting to holding me down during this all. Okay, there were the medium gray truck and the Florida human traffickers. Uh, he's the one that drives that one. Um... He was here in Louisville. I was only one out at the laundry mat in the parking lot. They slam on the brakes and they went, hey, Alec, hey, Alex, there she is. He's like, my girlfriend has a nice ass. It's great having a girlfriend. You don't have to do anything for it. I didn't even know his name. He was a man that was stalking me and breaking. He was hurting me. Dixie's seen him several times and Wendy, so did the masculine investigators and other people. John seen him in Minerva Grinders, and Darlene seen him in Bob Evans in North Camden, stalking me. There, like they said, the man that actually did this, there's a video of him crushing her skull in, in the case. That's how not funny this is. 
it's him in a Santa Claus beard. Where I, I told you, I looked at him, I thought, you look like the guy that said he crushed my head in. They said he misses me. But he does. Got the refrigerator in front of the door and things in front of the other. He's a serial rapist preying on women. It's Michelle's brother. They have that white hair, whitish blonde hair look. She showed up at a family church, told everybody. First, she was uh, Agent Will over my case's daughter. And they were doing all this for her. And then she was retired Judge Pete's daughter. And um, they she would hold court, 10, 15 girls, how they were having men drug beat raping me. They were harming me. They sold the rape and torture. And they were doing everything for her because she's a retired judge's daughter. Now, the only way she could be Will and Pete's daughter is if they're a gay couple. See, she's a stripper. She's just lying to everyone. Like they set up in Akron as that stripper and her brother or her family member scamming everybody. She was no retired judge's daughter. About a month ago, outside Colson Alliance, uh, Officer Marks, a tall white guy with white hair, Lamar Sharp from Michael Broswell, Amar, and the other Michael Canton, CS Canton officers worked at CSE. They seen Officer Mark and the other guys in the back of the bank keep an eye on me. Okay. Have people in the bank here and has their own security here. Okay. North Canton Jackson, please know who they are, and so does the Stark County Sheriff's. Okay. Uh, he was outside, I think it was him, it was one of my guys. It was off in the dark. When the case first started, uh, we found out her ex-husband was keeping her so drugged up. She, he was there, she was being drugged, being raped, and she didn't understand what was happening to her because she was so drugged up. Okay? And uh, they said that it was uh, some retired judge in, uh, drug beat and raping people in the drug cartel. And they wanted his connections to the drug cartel. Okay. And nobody was to, uh, uh, everybody was to stay out of it until they got his drug connection. Found out it's just some guy saying he's a judge. Like Wednesday when I was up in Ravenna, I went into the gas station. And they said, we all realized the ones working the case that it's Alex doing this. The white haired guy with his hair parted on the side. Dixie seen him and all those other people. It's him in a beard. Where I said it was a spit and image of him. Looked like him in a beard. It actually was him. In the first case, uh, there was a group of old men walking around Walmart. Dave looked at me and said, look at all of those old men. Those are actually young guys in disguises. She had to look at me. He's like, they don't have any wrinkles on their face. It's him in a cheesy disguise. Just a Santa Claus look. Him and Michelle are scamming everybody. She's no retired judge's daughter. And just because you, you think you say retired judge, you think you're above the law, you're not above the law. No man is above the law. Okay. See, last night they were out there screaming, yeah, right, Michelle wasn't a retired judge's daughter. We're going to call her. She'll, she'll come down and see what she looks like now. And blah, 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 blah. Bring her back. There's people looking for her. We seen her tapes of da 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 And so you're going to witness against her that she was stalking me. She has four erosive tapes and then a sextortion scam of photoshopping and washing rapey confessions. I never talked to anybody. I didn't even know about her until Thanksgiving. Well, I told you, they said something up at Apostolic Church of Barberton right before the case started. But they just... And until you actually catch somebody, you it's just... You know what I mean? And then they didn't even... The grandkids called her Auntie Shell. On Thanksgiving or 18, they made everything up uh, to Flora and they wanted the house for Auntie Shell and Papa. They already called her Auntie Shell. Okay. Um, and they're documenting me in games to pretend my whole family stood up for me. The police already taped him. Uh, including my ex-husband. Okay. I'm, it's documented like August 22nd of 23 outside Coles and Belden. Um, <sighs> Officer uh, Mark uh, told... Um, Officer Mark uh, was telling a lady that, uh, that she asked, did her ex-husband defend her? He said, yes, we taped him. And so did I. Karen, you're good at the kids. You're good at the grandkids. You would never hurt anyone. You're good to everyone, no matter who it is. Trust no man. Took that one to heart. Uh, taped him, okay? 
Um, he said, uh, then did anybody talk to her? I said, no. And said, uh, then they really did, uh, frame her before. He said, it's documented. They framed her. Was it the drug cartel? Yes. We seen them. So who framed me? The drug cartel. So who's Michelle and Alex? The drug cartel. She said, none of this is funny. He said, uh, it's also a documented medication error that made us, made her sick before. And it's documented. Somebody else was using our insurance. She's like, none of this is funny. He said, I know it's not. It's documented Karen around the house. FBI informant. My whole life has been under surveillance for five years by the police. Okay. And everything has been documented in a protected home custody with statements. Otherwise, it's entrapment if they do it. And otherwise, it's stocking tapes, peaking Tom tapes, Fourierism tapes. See what I mean? Like the retired CIA agent that I know. It's ridiculous that they didn't get arrested the first day and that agent take care of you it's ridiculous agents will fbi agents will sit on cases see who else pops up and let people get away with crimes i hate when they do that they should have nipped this those people should have been arrested and you should have been taken care of the first day and they should have been arrested for what they did to you and your family all right so i'm telling you part of the drug cartel where officer uh, i mean um where Pastor Mike last night said that he had prostitutes in there. And you could tell she was a prostitute the way she was dressed. Didn't kick her out because she needed Jesus. There was men in there that smelled like they smoked a whole joint before they walked in. Didn't kick them out because they needed Jesus. That was a drug cartel. That was probably her pimp. The human traffickers were in there impersonating the FBI. That's where I told Keith. Do you remember the guys in the big trucks that said they were FBI working my case? Yes. I said, uh, those were drug cartel guys. He's like, Karen, that's fucked up. And then he's like. He said, my God, they need Jesus. And the picture of Michelle, I've seen her before. Where I see her? I said, a church mocking me. He's like, my God, they all needed Jesus. They do. But I'll tell you what, they need to find out who's still in there. And like I said, that church should have surveillance when you walk in. The people walked in before me. They were the ones out there screaming it. Like the guy that came in and sat down after I did in the sanctuary. And none of funny. We heard those people out there screaming stuff at her. They can't resist. And I'll tell you what, all those people are today. We read what she wrote. We uh, realized that girl was no retired judge. She was down here scamming all of us about everything. Now, on 12-21-18, where I'm stabbed in the neck of the refrigerator, and Alex admitted he tried to murder me that day and rape me, okay? He's a man that's doing it. He's the one wearing a, a retired judge's uh, uh, robe and beard in the Florida Human Traffickers. He's a serial killer. He's a serial rapist. Like they said, they hired a serial rapist to do this to her. Um, okay? They did, they hired a serial rapist to do this to her. Okay. He left messages last summer. The guy that was going over there raping her messes her. I put my refrigerator in front of the door. I've never talked to anybody. Over the summer, by the sixth day up there, somebody kicked in our door. That's when they're supposed to set up the stocking cameras. Dave told Danny he hired Pete on his own. He can't hire Pete on his own. I've talked to uh, the Portage County Sheriff's. What these people did is illegal. It's a Fourth Amendment the Constitution. Okay? No one can be in your home but protect a life basis with statements. And you have to have a court order. You can't just hire someone to stalk somebody in their home. Like my friend from the prosecutor's office. Uh, nobody could be in your home. They made the big Smith of hate. They did it in your house. It's the fourth amendment of the house. Portage County Sheriff's, what these people did is illegal. Louisville Police, what these people did is illegal. Nothing they have is admissible. Ravenna Police too. Criminal attorney. Nobody had a right in the home. 
My one friend, his mom is a city in Georgia in Ohio. They could never use anything they had from before. Okay? It's four years in tapes. They go to jail for it. Let alone, now I'm going to tell you, on the sixth day, that's when the door was kept in the wall. That's when they're supposed to start their stalking. Okay? By the second week, I went out to mow the lawn, and I'm collapsing in front of the neighbor. He comes running over, I'm a nurse, can I help you? I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay. He, um, he said, I'll mow your lawn for it. I said, I feel bad, I don't have money to give you. He's like, neighbors don't pay each other. And I said, I still feel bad. He makes small talk and he ends up mowing along. My heart was beating through my neck. I had bruises on me, then throwing up. And it kept happening and I got a severe personal infection. Now the wall water out there without the water treatment system looked like poop water. It would burn your hands if you even washed your hands in it. I thought it was making me sick and so toxic that just washing my hands was making me throw up. Heart racing, dizzy, and it was making my personal iron infected. I didn't think of a rape. And then the bruises, I thought I was getting cancer. I went to all my family physician, it is documented all summer long of having all the signs of being drug being raped. And nobody, when I told them that I found out that's what my ex-husband was doing, they had me drugged up with rapies and told to say weirdo stuff, it's just a Photoshop shower scene. They said, your ex-husband's a vile sick animal. If you look at these people, but anything but vile sick animals, there's something wrong with you. Okay. Now, um, Um, there was other times I would go out and work in the back yard and into the entrance of the woods. It opens up canopy area. There was cans, pop bottles, or beer bottles, all kinds of stuff. It took me weeks to haul that stuff out of the front. I had 10-year-old grandchildren. I didn't want them playing it. So I cleaned and cleaned and cleaned until I got all cleaned out. Okay, worked really hard on it. I would go in and wash my hands, uh, make something to eat and drink, go in the bathroom, wash my hands better, come back, take a drink, and then, oh, I felt sick. And then the room would feel dizzy, and then hours would pass. I'd wake up, how I don't remember, hit my arm or my leg, run to the bathroom, throwing up. I lost 18 pounds before I called the FBI. Okay? And I never seen anybody, I never talked to anybody. And I had marks on me that looked like injection marks. I did, I googled and I found out that it's called needling someone. They do it in bigger cities. They put the um, uh, date rape drugs in injections. Uh, they were working with the fentanyl came from Texas for we all work for the game for Texas. We are his men. Uh, Dave hired us. Um, he's a drug lord. If you Google who's the king from Texas, it's a fentanyl king. A uh, U.S. military Iraqi translator uh, went in to be the largest, one of the largest fentanyl kings, uh, dark web malware hacker. The photoshopping, all this stuff's child's play to him. But that's where they got all the rupees. Uh, the Florida people also worked with him. And then where they said this whole thing, this whole thing is a bet between two gentlemen. Okay. They're drug lords. They're using her as a pawn. Winner takes all. And then the bet of pushing me to suicide, the other one make me give up everything I had in life um, and have other people participate. And then by May 19, at strange order, no man was ever to want me again and they were to make sure of it. Uh, there was all kinds of that and winner take all. Okay. All right. Um, December 21st, 23, it should be that day in Walmart 62 by the food aisle. Some little kid wanted to say something. Said, don't say a word. It, it's been the bet between those two drug lords fighting over this area. Uh, one went to jail. They got the fentanyl king. I've never been questioned or wrongdoing. I've never been prosecuted. I've never been found guilty. They lied and made everything up on me. It was the biggest scam in the world. Um, my ex-husband defends me, Karen, you're good to the kids, you're good to the grandkids. You would never hurt anyone. You're good to everyone, no matter who it is. I taped him about John's kids going to be making something up because of the divorce and because I was going to move out, but they couldn't say anything bad. They actually taped him 
saying that and that nobody could ever say anything bad about you. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I don't know, mom. He said, Melissa, I told him you're going through a divorce. You're going to be moving out. Um, she's just going to have a makeup something. Nobody could say anything bad about you. But you have the church people make up something too. But nobody could ever say anything bad about you. Don't worry about it. He defends me Thanksgiving 18. In the basement, they uh, taped those kids saying um, they wanted the house for Auntie Sean. Papa, Grandma need to get out. And then later on the floor, they made everything up. They were games of protect. Laughing. Sick shit. Floor read them out October 23rd, 2019. At BB's first party to a bunch of dolls. Of course, it never happened. Of course, it wasn't true. We made up their games to pretend. I would have spanked them. They don't play with people. Okay? And she's sitting there chuckling, holding, checking her lips, and she was seven. She didn't realize all the stuff she was saying was sick, but it came from a stripper's mouth to all them. Um, let's see. They made up stuff on all my kids, all my grandkids. I used to spend half the day debunking everything. I went to Josh, it's like, I have never flashed you. He's like, Mom, where would you get that one? I'd verify it. And if people are making up stuff like that, i move away. I said, well, I've never hurt you. I've never done anything bad. Well, I never said you did. Do the same thing to Dan. Where'd you get that one? Jen's like, you know, if anybody said you did anything wrong, that was November 13th, 22, my phone's tapped. If anybody said you did anything wrong, they would be lying. They would be a Pinocchio. As if you do anything wrong. Mother grandkids are the sweetest grandma ever and the best grandma ever. My whole family depended on me. That's where August 22nd, 23rd, Mark's outside of Coles in Belden Village, about 1 o'clock. My, my car spoke. Said, uh, none of this is funny. They're talking about stuff. Said, did her ex-husband defend her? Karen, you're good to the kids. You're good to the grandkids. You wouldn't hurt anybody. You're good to everyone, no matter who it is. I taped him. So the police. They saw the log and they all know they asked to defend me. Okay? I expected them to. Right? He said, uh, yeah, we taped him defending her. Did anybody ever talk to her? He said, no. Then they really did frame her before. He said, it's documented they framed her. Was it the drug cartel? He said, yes, we've seen them. And she's like, no, that's funny. He said, it also was a documented that it was a medication error that made her sick before and documented some other woman was even using her insurance. She's like, no, that's funny. He said, I know it's not. Okay. Been scammed by two pimps and a prostitute. The drug cartel ran the biggest scam here for them to get away with murder here. Like they said... Uh, March 1st of 15 and 19 to Dave that it was nothing but a real life case of how to get away with murder and that I'd realize it. When you guys realize they're just killing people and getting away with it. I was at a uh, two client lift. I was working with my coworker, Lori. And I told her, I said, uh, or she, she got a text that her friend had got uh, shot in Canton and killed in his car. Walked up and shot him. She said, this is as bad as when they took my family member and they break, they tied her up and cut her up in pieces. Just like they made fun of me. It's funny they raped her. She said they kept showing me in stores and told her how they murdered her. And they would laugh at her. I'm like, I'm sorry, people are sick. And she's like, you want to see a picture of her? She was beautiful. And um, she's like, there was a big reward to find out who killed her. Um, I sat down and I said, did you know about the guy in the white van? How'd you know about the white van that took my family member? I took a deep breath. I said, she lives here in Louisville too. I said, did you see the Florida blights here? Yeah. The men, she said they were in the bar. Her and her boyfriend would go there. And, uh, they were in there. I said, they said they were drug traders. Yes, they did. I said, um, did you know about Henry Moffey? Sounds about right. He was with him. Showed her the picture from Facebook. That's not him, but he is with him. He tried to get a hold of me the first month. He thought I was beautiful. They're trying to kill me. He thinks I'm beautiful. Um, all right. I didn't tell her that, though. I said, well, they said they were drug traders. She said, yes, they did. I said, they said they were gentlemen's from Florida. She's like, no, they said they were the Detroit boys. 
Now you tell me how you knew about the white van that killed my family member. I didn't have the heart to tell. I'd have changed the subject. I would have lost it. And that guy needs so much care. I couldn't be crying and stuttering and choking. Okay? Because I'm too upset that they slaughtered another person. Um, I go to work at my other clients and um, my DM's real pretty and she said the big truck guys went after her and she had to get in a store and get away from them and hide. Okay. Well, my house manager, Melissa, she's like, you know, the guy in the white van, the tall white guy with the black hair. She said they took my knees. And I started stuttering, that's my kidnapper. And she said that the authorities know they're working with the big truck guys and other people to grab people out of stores and other places, and they're all working together. That's where I tried to tell that agent. He tried to kidnap me, and he's calling me a liar. Terry let me tape her with her permission. She's seen him. Okay. He let a serial killer go. Okay. I where I talked to that retired CIA agent. Uh, she's like, you know that Texas group is really bad. They've killed both FBI and CIA agents. She said they're really dangerous. I know they are. She said, did you know that they walk up to cars and shoot people? And I'm like, I heard that. She said, do you know they dismember people? I said, I've heard that one too. She said they got a big group out of Hartville. I said, I heard that one too. I was having trouble with my vehicle. I pull into a store and I'm talking to one of the cashiers. And he had adopted where there was a bunch of them that were part of harassing me were up there. And they were selling people they were grabbing. And some young girl had a little boy, a baby boy, and he adopted him because that mother's going to go to jail for a long time for selling other people. Okay. And he said, um, I said, well, that's nice of you to adopt him. He said, do you ever see a tall white guy with whitish blonde hair, about our age, you know, in the 50s, um, clean cut, thin, nicely dressed? I'm like, yes. He goes, and I'm like, what? I said, are you okay? He's like, you don't realize who it is. You seen him? And I said, several times. Why? And are you okay? I've had strokes before. I'm thinking I'm going to have to call 911, right? What is wrong with you? I thought he was a cop. My bad. He didn't have a name tag on. Serial killer. Drug lord. Sorry. My bad. Although he was never seen around the undercover police scene with officers in uniform. So then again, I should have guessed it. But my bad. Like they said in camp, we all seen that guy around him. We all seen him. He's like, that was a Russian drug lord. I said, well, it was M13 selling people. The Mexican drug cartel, because all the Latinos said they were for Pete, and Pete's actually Alex, uh, you know. And he's like, well, they were helping him, but they weren't the ones doing it. It was him. And now you seen him, and he left you alive. You're very lucky. For this whole thing is a bet between two gentlemen. Winner takes all. They were fighting over the area. In front of people used me as a pawn. They said it in front of the cops. This whole thing is a bet between two gentlemen. Winner takes all of their bets. And they're drug lords. One was an Iraqi and one was a Russian. The Iraqi went to jail. And they got that big group out of Hartville. A lot of them were the people harassing me. That's the kind of crazy shit my ex was messed up in. That's why I got hurt so bad. And I got left up there in the middle of basically a drug war. If they pull uh, right before Christmas 18, my ex will be caught with shooters. They shot up the duplex afterwards. I had to hide not to get killed. Thank God the old lady was in the hospital. And they had to gut the place in January and burn everything in the snow. And we did inside. Being rival drug gangs, they probably did kill two people up there. My ex got caught with on surveillance and killed him. Um, I was almost shot driving within the first 45 days. Had a slam, tuck, and swerve. My car's back. Uh Then the 12 21 18. Uh, the bashed in the head. Uh, then the shooting night by Christmas 18. 
um, then I'm human traffic between April and June of 19. I'd wake up and men would be attacking me in the room and go black. I'd have marks on me. I'd wake up the next morning. I'd been raped. I had been drugged. I had marks on me. I'd been beat and I didn't have enough money to eat. And I would try to go to work half drugged up and I couldn't concentrate. And they said some guy was taking a payoff to let them rape me. Um, July to September 19, I'm raped and tortured by three men. The one raping me is a dark gray truck and the Florida human traffickers. He told everybody was FBI. They have a video of that. They sold that to even children. Like some of my clients, this is crazy, Karen. People admitting to drugging you and telling you to save it for admit to raping you in front of people in stores. It's like, stay out of it. I'll tell the police. Um... And they have admitted to framing me and everything in front of people. They think they're funny. They're a bunch of crackheads scamming people. Um, Karen around the house is a nationwide human trafficking scam. Uh, people have said that up in Hartville. We know her case is a nationwide human trafficking scam. I'm going to go ahead and upload this. But, um, yeah, it actually got better with your family. They realized Michelle was no judge's daughter. And she was scamming everybody. They made up the scam of the chip to cover up the attempt to murder. Had people walk by me, have their phones stained. Um, even told Dr. Ellen Atinas, March 13, 21, that try to blame the FBI for everything. Had big badges got in the back. That's why they're on lockdown now when it comes to me. That no one's allowed to talk to these people. The hospital can get sued. It can get shut down. Okay? And you got to think. Chipping is a puppy shot. A lot of big businesses put it in your arm or hand. You just wave it above the door and it opens it or unlocks the computer. And that way you don't have just passwords. Bigger businesses uh, want to use it. Uh, but they didn't even do that. I was talking to a medical professional. They said that uh, she was on a group chat that they were grabbing women, drug them up, beating them, raping them, and then telling people that they chipped them. If they go to the police, the police could protect them, that they would... Um, uh, they could find them anywhere. They ran the same scam on other women. They didn't chip me. They just wanted to scare me and not to tell on them for raping me. Just like they did those other women. Um, but, yeah. On December 30th, 23, Altman Hospital. I'm there with my client in the emergency room. Uh, December 30th, 23, they walk by, the nurses, no one's ever talked to these people. My God, they had somebody impersonate a doctor from Altman Hospital, uh, selling her, saying they were selling her information. The hospital could get sued. It could get shut down, basically. Um, he said, uh, nobody's to ever, uh, talk to these people because they could get sued. And they looked it up. It was not even any of their doctors. And they were just impersonating a doctor, selling them, Okay. Then they said, you know, nobody's to back the doctors from before. She, um, where they said, uh, they were, my God, they were lying that she even had brain tumors and she had nothing wrong with her. And they were all lying, ripping off her insurance. Nobody's to ever back people lying on people just to rip off their insurance. And it was medication errors that made her sick before. And they were the ones making her sick and nobody's to ever back that. And they were all lying. Cops walked by. Is that what's going on? All those doctors were lying on her before and said, yeah. Was medication errors. <sighs> Not, none of this is funny. These people impersonated doctors, feds. And it was a drug cartel. Running the biggest scam in the world. 